Hey all you wonderful power rappers, it's Barry here. Welcome back to another tutorial over here at Power Apps Academy. So today we are going to be doing a well a starting a video series for all you absolute power apps beginners out there to get you um, accustomed to the power apps interface and to learn the three most important things that you know need to know about power apps. Um, so let me just quickly jump into the present screen. This is the mini series. Uh, today we're going to be starting with part one over here and that is understanding the basics of Power Apps. So we're going to dive into the Power Apps Studio and we're going to have a look at uh, all the different elements of the Power Apps Studio because that's the most important part, getting comfortable with uh, what you need to be uh, knowledgeable about in the studio to help you become m more productive quickly. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we hop into that, I'd just like to hop over to our partner, um, powerappify.com. Head over there and check out all the great business templates um, and apps they've got over there that you can install. Great if you want to have ready-made apps that you can start using within your business or if you just want to learn power apps you can download these as fully full instructions of how to install it and get it configured you can check out how things work and then you can also customize it uh, and, and practice customizing it and getting your skills up um, uh, nice and easy there so head over and check them out uh, right so I guess we are ready to start part one and having a look at Power Apps Studio. So um, you know, feel free to follow along as we go on the video. It's always useful to actually do as you're learning um, instead of just watching because you can easily forget. So practice makes perfect as they say. Right, let's hop over to the present screen and I will escape out of that. Just before we start off, here's a, a quick little diagram. Uh, I put together uh, just to help you visualize how Power Apps works. It's pretty straightforward. You basically get your Power Apps portal. That's when you log into Office 365 and you go to make.powerapps.com, which is the Power Apps Studio. That's where what we're going to look at today. And that's where you do all your, like if you're building a website, I don't know if you've used Wix or something like that, or some sort of website editor. That's where you basically build your app, the look and feel of your apps in there. You then uh, get connectors, which connect to data. Now an app without data isn't a very good app, right? Apps uh, and data are uh, you know, really important. They go together and also other APIs. So calling data from other systems and functionality from other systems. This is what connectors help you do. Um, so we won't go into connectors uh, too much today, although we'll just look at where they are in the, 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 the studio. Um, and then we'll also be touching on databases, SharePoint, Excel, that kind of thing to where you'd get your data from. Um, and, and also APIs, which is just like connections into say, Azure or Office 365 to get user data, that kind of stuff. And that just helps you enrich your apps and build really cool functionality and data-driven apps, okay? So today's focus, again, is just this Power Apps portal uh, and stu well, studio, really. Power Apps Studio, where you're going to make your apps, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. So uh, let me just bring up the right screen. So over here, I've logged into my portal. I click on this burger menu up at the top and I click on Power Apps. This is going to launch the Power Apps, make the powerapps.com, which is the front end for uh, Power Apps. And um, this is where I can create new apps. So I can open apps that I've already uh, created. Uh, we're going to create a new app. Now there's different methods of creating apps. We're just going to start with a, a blank app and then uh, towards the end, We'll show you how to create an app automatically from say a SharePoint list um, or from a template over here. And then there's other ways. We're not going to go into where you can describe the app that you want and then it builds it for you in the background. We're just going to, that uh, you can come on to uh, a bit later on. But uh, for today's session, we're mainly going to do 
creating a brand new blank app over here and the most common type of power apps is a canvas app and that's what we're going to be focusing on this is the normal types of apps that we we're all used to we're not going to um, worry about power pages or um, uh, these other types of apps so it's just a blank canvas app we'll click on create i'm just going to call it test uh, test app and you can see the format is tablet or phone and this is just real estate that you have available on a tablet is basically what you're going to do if you uh, if people normally work on it on a big screen so their computer laptop that kind of thing but if you want your app to be specific to a mobile phone format where they can just touch it on their phone then you'd create a phone format just be aware that the phone screen is a lot smaller so you've got to try and think about the design for your app being on a smaller interface how it all fl flows that kind of stuff generally try and stick for to tablets if you want to have lots of real estate to play around with for this example we're going to stick to tablet so we hit create right it goes off in the background just gets the studio ready and there we have it fires up into your browser okay cool now now um, it's really uh, important that you get to understand the studio, the different elements of the studio. Now the, what you'll find is a lot of things are repeated in Power App Studio. So like some of the common things up at the top here are also available down the left hand side here. Um, they just make it at the top just so it's easier to get to when you're working with the apps. So the screen um, is all the different uh, functionality built into Power App Studio. We're going to focus on this left hand screen first. So you've got the tree view. This is probably where you're going to spend most of your time and we're going to come back to this in, uh, in a few minutes. This plus over here is the same as this insert over here and again we're going to come back to this. This is where you put in all the controls um, like your text boxes, your icons, um, dates whatever whatever you want to put on your screen this is where you're going to insert from okay either this one here or this plus this little cylinder here is your data sources so when you want to connect like if we go back into the images i showed you earlier we want to connect to data we use a connector this is where we're going to add data basically adds in most of your connectors in over here so you could like if you had a sharepoint list that was going to store your data you would uh, click in SharePoint here, so you click in Add Data, click SharePoint or SQL or whatever it is, and then you click on here and add in the connector. We're not, we're not going to do that right now, but uh, just to let you know what this uh, data item is in the menu. Media, this is where if you have like um, graphics that you wanna, you've created in, on your computer or images on your computer that you also want on your app, you have to upload them into the app first and that's how you can use them in your app so uh, it's just a place where you can upload them and you can manage your media that you upload you can see uh, you've got a certain amount of space so you might want to delete some that you're not using and um, this one is power automate so the part of microsoft um, uh, studio like the power app suite um, there is Power Automate, which is your automation flows that run through a different application, but that's where you can do loads of different types of automations, converting files, updating on actions. Like if 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 you find this date, then run the sequence of events, and there's all sorts of automations that you can do in Power Automate, and you can link your app to Power Automate, so you can say. When this button clicks, launch this uh, Power Apps Automate flow, and then it runs a few things, and you can return values into your apps and that kind of thing. So this is where you create that connector. This one over here is for formulas, variables, and collections. So as you create variables which store data, specific data for you to use in your app, um, collections are where you collect data from say your data source might be a database or SharePoint library and you want to store it in the memory of your app so you're not having to keep going off and querying your database you load it into memory and then you can uh, manipulate that data within your memory um, th those are called collections 
and this is where you uh, if you if you store in variables and collections you can come into this menu item here and they'll be listed and you can click on them and you can just see what data is in each of those okay and then uh, just these advanced tools we're not going to go into these this is just monitoring your app and running some tests and that kind of thing and this is the search and replace so if you got some code in your app somewhere that, or some variable or something that you're looking for you can just type it in and you can replace it um, and that will find it for you uh, relatively easily okay so uh, the, the right hand side is properties and we're going to come on to that so it's as you add items into your app each of those items has a number of properties and that's what this side of the screen is for now we're going to cover that uh, off in a bit more detail in a moment uh, this is also linked to properties over here so this drop down is all the properties for the different um, components and items that you add into your screen and this is your formula bar so where you want to start adding your own custom code this is where you're going to add it for different properties and we're going to um, just cover some really basic examples in this video okay so we're going to head back to this uh, place over here which is the tree view where we're going to spend most of our time today and we're going to go through most some of the more important items on here okay so this this is called a screen okay you can see it's blank at the moment I can now add an item from the insert pane this is the insert or this uh, plus over here where I can add different items to my screen to make it look nice or I can connect to a data source and that might build in some data now there's, when you're thinking about data you're thinking about forms and collections because collections are like, like if I've got a table with loads of rows in it of different lines of data then uh, a collection is basically a view of all those rows in the table so it's a list of all those rows and you can select one a form is when i click on one of those rows it's all the columns for each of the rows it's presenting all the, the data points within that row in a form on your table so you can manipulate you can update change the data in there so we're going to come um and present some examples just now but that's a little bit later first we want to just make the uh, page look nice and start looking at some of the different controls so firstly the screens so the screens are like web pages right you when you go to a website and you click on a button on a website loads of a different website each of those screens you can think of like a different web page within a in a site okay so um we can we can also rename them so I like to go and rename everything that I'm going to reuse so we might start with sc screen we can keep um, sc screen and we can uh, home page okay so we can call screen home page and the reason that you call them something that you something more descriptive is because you use like screens like the sorry the the name of the object or the control within your code and if you name it correctly then you can quickly understand which one it is and you don't get confused like oh gosh which which page is that control on or um, whatever so just think about your naming conventions always um, begin it with what type of control it is so if it's a screen call it a screen if it's a a, a text label call it a label lbl underscore and then whatever um, if it's a text input box just call it like txt underscore or if it's a button call it btn underscore just so you know what kind it is so you don't get confused later so let's ma make a two screen app I'm going to add a blank screen in there and we're just going to rename this one so so uh, screen we call this um, page one so we've got our home page and page one okay so we're going to click on our own home page we're not going to add any data now so we don't have to worry about this little message over here we're going to add something from here let's say on our home page um, we want to have a uh, like a text label at the top and we want to call that home page okay cool I can now this is a control right I've, I've added a label 
which is a text box and each control that I add has each control has a load of properties and these are all the properties for that control so whichever control I have highlighted and that whether whether it's the whole screen or the text label or whatever you can see this is the screen properties this is the text label property every one I add if I, I click on it each one has its own properties now I'm on the, te the text label up here if I click go back onto this tree view you can see I've added a label to the home screen now remember I said about renaming now you don't have to rename everything but things that you are going to use within your code uh, I suggest you name it so I'm going to put this home page uh, banner so I know exactly what it is okay and then you can see it's updated here I could also update it there remember I said there's loads of places where you can do the same thing I could also I could edit it here I could edit it up here um, what is the text I want to show in there instead of text I actually want to put in uh, home page okay cool I can choose the font top I'm gonna make it really big yeah because it's my home page and I want to you know, maybe make it bold and I want to put it in the center cool and um, I let's say I want the color to be the background color to be dark blue and I want the oh gosh sorry I click back on it and I want the text to be white cool okay that looks pretty nice and then I could put in another label in there let's add it in another label and we could just go here we could say um, welcome we could spell welcome to our app okay and we could center that into the screen and we could you know make that big as well welcome to our app and then we could uh, add in remember I said there's different ways we could add in here we could also add in here and we could just go to add a button now a button is really useful because we generally we can put code into buttons there's loads of places you can put code but generally you want when you click a button do something okay so we can put a big button in there and then we could say uh, now again the properties of the button in here so just go this is where I've added it I want to go back to show me all the items on my home page you can see I've added in the button there uh, I'm gonna rename that because buttons you often call in your code so button uh, let's say enter app okay and we want to change the text in the button so we can go up to here where it says button we don't want that we want to say enter app okay cool so we've got this button um, we can obviously change uh, the color of it that kind of thing let's make it like red or whatever uh, cool uh, you can also do like the the border radius you can see that's 10 this is like how curvy you want this like I'll show you if we change that to 20 um, or if we change that down to 5 have a look at how that changes it you can see there's only slight little corners depends how what you want in your app just change it back to 10 okay now this little play button here is when I've finished designing and I actually want to test my app I can just click on play and this presents the app what in a way that your end user might see it and you can see if I hover over the button now when I actually click on it it's like pushing the button there's no code in there so it doesn't know what to do when I click it it's just empty so um, you can also uh, if you go back into the properties you can also like pressed color you can you can see when I was pressing it changed color you can configure all of that you can put tool tips on it to say when someone hovers over it tells them what to do where it says double click to edit that's a tool tip so you can change all that kind of stuff there's advanced properties for each of the buttons and any control that you add on here there's there's normal properties and advanced properties now everything you can do in here and here you can also change in this um, this menu over here this is all the properties of each of the items
except in here it's quite easy to add in the code that you want to configure uh, for each of the, the properties, okay? So let's give you an example of how we might want to add some code. Okay, so we've got this home page. Now we want to say when we, so when someone clicks on the button, we want them to launch the second, um, the second page in the app. So what we simply do is we go onto the on select. On select means when the button is clicked. Now you can probably go through here and just read through each of them. There's some like really important ones, which is like uh, display mode is like um, if you want something to be turned off or on. If if I say if I go into display mode and I put display mode is in is uh, disabled, it would grey the button out. So um, it would mean that it's not available for use. If something in my app, if I if I wanted someone to say there's a text box fill that text box in with the value and then once that value is in there then I could enable that that kind of stuff there's color oh gosh oh um one second I have gone out of my app and not saved let me just fix it I'll come back to you one second sorry I had to rebuild the app I had a, I've got a button on my mouse and I clicked it and it escaped from the app without allowing me to uh, save so uh, sorry about that anyway we're back we're back um, so I think we were at the point where we wanted to enter something we wanted to make something happen when we click on the button here so now this is where we're going to go up to this part over here and uh, we're going to use the on select I think we were looking at some different options you can familiarize yourself with like the main ones with uh, like text this is like the same as the text over here um, there's all sorts of things but uh, on select is the one when you click the button run this now you can see there's false in there that just means that nothing's going to happen when we run but what we want to do is we want to go to the next page so basically screen page one so the new the other screen that we created when you click on this open the other screen okay so we're going to use something called navigate function in here now these you just become accustomed to um, as you are working through it now you just use Google as your friend when you want to search up like oh how do I move to a new page what function do I use they'll bring up navigate and actually um, Let's just have a look at, uh, if you do um, a quick Google search, you go to um, formula references uh, in Google. It's got all the formulas that you can work on here. And you can see if we go down to N. Uh, navigate. There we go. Navigate. And then it tells you exactly how to use it and loads of examples. Um, so whenever you get stuck just search in there but there's loads of communities that you can ask online um, that will people will be more than willing to help you so uh, you just get used to it so navigate and then uh, you always open brackets so you put it put in the formula and then you put in the screen that you want to navigate to it, it already knows that it should be a screen next so we want to go to our, this is why we named our screen so we know which one we want to go to and then uh, this little auto completion is telling you what you are doing within navigate so you can see there's navigate what's the target which is the screen we want to go to and then put a cover and then what do we want our transition to be I normally put none the others are just like how it goes into the screen so it fades and that kind of stuff and then we close the brackets cool so now we've got a little bit of code on there when we click on our button over here, if we go to advanced, we can also see the code in here on the unselect property. We're going to navigate to screen one and the screen transition is going to be none. So let's see what happens. So we click on play. We can click on enter app. And there we go. It takes us to the, the other. We haven't got anything on the screen, but you can see um, that it took us there. OK, now there's also something if you don't want to click on play, you can also hold in the alt button on your um, on your keyboard and you can see that enables the button to select as well and that takes us to the new one so you don't always have to click play you can also hold in your alt button and then click on the button 
Now in this screen we can look at a few more items that we want to do. So let's uh, let's look on the if we click on the screen itself, we can go back to the properties of the screen. Let's say we want to put a background image on the screen, we can use the stock images that are already supplied. Let's just use you know this one over here. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Let's try that again. Let's just try this one, insert. Oh, okay, I'm not too sure. Let's say we want to actually um, go to media. We'll upload our own. I'm not sure why the stock images aren't working. Anyway, so we, we've uploaded one there. Uh, sorry, so let's delete that and I can go into background image and just use the bot wallpaper. It doesn't actually fit on, on the whole way on the screen, but you get the idea. And then let's say on this page two, we want to um, import some things. So let's say we want to do capture some data. So let's go um, over here. Now, because I've got a black background, I'm going to change my text to white just so you can see it. So let's say, what is your name? And we want to make it look nice. And then now, now the text box allows you to type something, but if you want someone to write something, you have to use um, an input. Okay, so if you click on the inputs, there's loads of different options. You can do drop down, combo boxes, that kind of stuff. But let's say you just want to get some text input. We're going to click on that. We're going to go over here. We're going to align the text input with, uh, with our question over there, or our requirement. Now we don't generally want to have text input. You don't want someone to see text input there. You want to uh, just delete that text input. So it's blank. If you want like um, hint text to say, enter your name here, and that will provide some like instructions of what to do um, in case it's not that clear. And then um, we might want to say also we can just control C and control V to copy this. And we might want to go, um, what is your birth date? What is your birthday? Okay. And then we can also insert, there's loads of different things here, like a date picker. Okay. So you don't have to get them to type it in. They can just go and they can click on this. We get a play and they can click and select their birth date, whatever it is. And then they can enter their name. Okay. And then uh, you can have a, let's say another button in here. Now I, I'm not re I'm not labeling all of these as I should. Remember I said, if we go back to this tree view where you spend most of your time, you should you know, label all of these. Now I'm not going to just for because it's going to be too time consuming for this demo, but you should, you know, rename all of these um, <clears throat> as you're going along. Don't leave it too, too, too late because it's always difficult to go back and do it later. It's just easier to do it as and when you're doing that. Okay. So we could have one button that says um, go back. So go back to home page. Okay, and then this one we could say email email your data. Okay, cool. So um, what we could do is click on this one. What does anyone remember? What the um, the function is to go back? The expression is so we're going to go on select. We're going to go into navigate. That's right. And what are we going to put? Open brackets. Which screen are we going to go to? Home screen. Transition is none. Close it. Cool. And then email. Now uh, we could go into a bit more detail. There's um, other things that we could actually allow us to email things out, but we're not going to get into that right now. And also just to note that without data connectors, your data in your app 
becomes not very useful, right? So what are you going to do with this data? Yes, we could email it out. Um, now we could, uh, you, there's a connector that connects to um, Outlook and that just allows you to go, you know, open Outlook, run a, run a, um, an expression um, and, you know, just go email, send email to, take the data from those text fields and then send it an email and we can just simply put it in that button. We're not going to go into that much detail today, um, but you could also save that to a SharePoint list. So we could click on a button to say save to SharePoint list. Now we're going to go through that in the next video. So um, do keep your eyes peeled for that one. So we're just giving you a flavor of what you can do in here. Um, let's go back, back to home page, enter our app. So that just gets you there. And then, um, yeah, you can email the data. But as I said, keep your eyes peeled for the next video. Now, um, when we are uh, dealing with that as you as I've said before we don't we haven't connected in any data sources yet so this is just an app collecting some data that you want to email out it's not going to save it anywhere when I close the app all that data is going to get lost but there are two things within an app that you need to know now we're going to add in another screen that you need to know when managing data so we're going to add another blank screen and we're going to call this one um, rename screen um, data okay and to do anything data wise you have to um, have linked in a data source and uh, remember what I said it's uh, the forms and the forms show the rows in your data and the uh, galleries show the lines of rows so like how many lines you've got what each line is and then when you click on the line you might have lots of data points within that row and that's in the form so I'll just give you a quick example we're going to quickly add in a SharePoint list so we're going to add a data source we're going to go SharePoint I'm going to click on it SharePoint um, is it going to find yes Here's, I've got one I created earlier, so it's just called employees, I'm going to connect in. So it's just a list in SharePoint that has a number of employees in it. Now you can see I've got a connection to my SharePoint list. Now there's two things, it's the galleries and the forms. Now we're going to go again plus, and we're going to go and find gallery. And we're going to just call a vertical gallery. Okay, now I'll select a data source. Now I've already added one in here, which is my employees table in SharePoint. Whenever you whenever you connect a form or a gallery, it's always going to want a data source. Okay, these are all data driven um, components. Okay, so there it is. Um, I've got these are the rows that I have in my SharePoint list. Let me just see if I can bring up my SharePoint list so you can see what it is. Okay, this is the SharePoint list. As you can see, here are the rows, each of the rows, and here are the columns, the data points in each row. So John Doe's salary, age, email, okay. So the gallery shows all these rows. Now, by default, it just adds all the rows, but it might not show, like it's the, the head of the rows, the, the salary, which we actually want the title. Okay, so let's go in and change this. So you always edit the top of the gallery row, and you can see the layout is already selected. So it's image title and subtitle. So we want title. Um, why is it showing the salary as the title? Hmm, that's strange. Should be the name. Let's just uh, click into it quickly. Okay, so uh, the gallery um, has some settings. Now uh, the layout is title. Now, if I want to just have a, I'm wondering why it's showing the salary instead of the name. So I'm just going to go in the fields. The fields are 
whatever's been selected. I can see the title two, which is the top one, is linking to salary. I don't want it to link to salary. I want it to link to title in the SharePoint list, which is the name, okay? So as, as you can see, now we're not gonna go into too much detail here. Sorry, I'll probably get in a little bit into detail, but this is just showing you the number of items in my SharePoint list there. I've got all the names over here. You can see I've got all the names. I can you know, click into them uh, if I configure it, but uh, uh, we're not gonna do that now. I'm just showing you an example. And then if we add a form, let's go into forms. We can have a, a, a display form, an edit form. So one allows you to make changes. One is just for viewing data. You can see it's not connected. I'm going to connect it. These are like galleries and forms are both related to data sources. So you have to have, have data added in. Okay. Let's go and also put that into top in the employees list. Okay. So um, I can then connect this to employees but for now you can see each of the each of the columns in here is shown in the form in the gallery each of the rows are shown okay and it help, what it allows you to do is the gallery generally shows you a list of things that are in the form you then click on one and then it opens all the data points for that item in the form and you can either view it or you can edit it that's all we're going to do for now, uh, in, the, in uh, the next video, we can get into how we can actually start changing the data around. So hopefully that gave you a good view of the key items in the app. You either have you know, your home page that you can configure stuff where you can put buttons. You can have another page where you can collect data and you can maybe email it out. Don't forget if you want to save it to like a database or SharePoint, you can do that too, but you have to have the connector. If you are saving it to SharePoint, you might want to view that data back in your app. And to do that, you use galleries to show a list of uh, rows that you can select and go into the detail. And the forms show the detail, either show it or allow users to update the data in there and then save it back to the data source. So those are, I'd say, are the three key things uh, shown in those pages um, uh, and there's lots more that you can do but uh, that's all we're going to cover for today's video if you've got any questions uh, please hit us up in the comments below if you would like us to focus on uh, something else then also give us a shout out otherwise uh, we'll continue into the detail in the next lesson where we're going to be looking in a bit more detail into these forms and galleries and how we can start manipulating and saving and changing data. So um, do uh, keep a lookout for that video. Otherwise, please don't forget to smash up the like button if you found some value in this video. You know, keep practicing. That's the way to uh, perfect your skills. It's a bit daunting at first, but very quickly you get the hang of it. Watch YouTube videos. That's the best way to learn and a bit of trial and error as well. So thanks for sticking around. Hope you found it useful. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.